With the rising cost of both electricity and petrol and diesel, you'd be forgiven for taking a moment to wonder which is cheaper and at which point one becomes more expensive than the other. I know I have. We have a plug-in hybrid which usually covers our daily mileage, but not always. On those days, we may end up charging during peak times at a significantly higher price. We also have a Nissan Micra, which I've assumed is cheaper to run when we've run out of electric juice. But is it really? I spent a bit of time looking into this and created a spreadsheet to help me understand just exactly how much it costs to run our cars and at what price point we're happy to charge our plug-in hybrid. This will also be useful if you're wondering whether it's time to ditch your internal combustion engine and switch to an electric car and what your savings might look like. You can download a copy of the spreadsheet via the link in the video description box below and use it for your own figures. If you're here just for the spreadsheet that's absolutely fine but please do support the channel by subscribing for free and and sharing the video with friends and family who you think may benefit from it. So let's jump on the computer and check it out. This is the starting point, some basic information about your annual mileage and price of electricity per kilowatt hour. We do around 10,000 miles per year in our Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV and charge off peak on Octopus Energy's GO tariff at 7.5p per kilowatt hour. The peak figure for the Octopus GO tariff in our area, the northeast of England, is 29.6p per kilowatt hour, which we're locked in for for a year. Unfortunately, the peak rate has gone up again since I signed up and is now currently 38.57p per kilowatt hour, but the off-peak rate has remained the same at 7.5p per kilowatt hour. If you want to find out the most up-to-date Octopus Go rates, you can do this by clicking on the link in the video description, which will take you to this page. Enter your postcode and it will give you the peak and off-peak rates for your area. I suspect there will be another increase in rates to come in October 2022, but as I mentioned before, when you sign up, you'll secure those rates for a year. And if you change your mind, there are no exit fees. And on the topic of the increasing price of electricity, is it now worth considering installing solar and or a battery in your home? I've also looked into this in a bit more detail, and you can check out this video by clicking in the top right hand corner. There's also a customizable spreadsheet you can download which will allow you to enter your household's consumption data and propose solar and or battery install to work out the savings, payback and return on investment. It will also allow you to factor in inflation into your decision making. You can use this whether you just want to install solar only, a battery only, solar and a battery, or if like me you're thinking of adding more solar and a battery to your current solar array. Despite this peak increase, Octopus Energy's GO tariff is still an excellent tariff for those who are able to consume most of their electricity during these off-peak times, so mainly electric vehicle owners. But don't forget it isn't just your car you can run during this time, you can also run your dishwasher, tumble dryers, etc. during these hours. It is worth noting to be eligible for the GO tariff now, you must either own or long-term lease a battery electric vehicle or plug-in hybrid vehicle that will be charging at home and this is in their terms and conditions. If you're switching to Octopus Energy, you can get a £70 credit, that's £50 from Octopus, and an extra £20 from us. To switch and claim your extra reward, follow the instructions in the video description box below, and thanks in advance for supporting the channel. You can then enter the cost of petrol or diesel in your area. At the time of making this video in July 2022, it is around the £1.87 mark for us. In the electric car comparison section, you can add your battery capacity in kilowatt hours and number of miles achieved from this. Our 2014 Outlander PHEV has a usable battery capacity of 8.4 kilowatt hours and a real world range of around 18 miles. Once this data is entered, you will see that the miles per kilowatt hour, price per mile, and annual costs will self populate. You can see for our Outlander when charged off peak, this works out at a fantastic 4p per mile. The next section is for your internal combustion engine comparison. For me, I'm going to enter the figures for our Mitsubishi Outlander when it's run out of battery charge, and also our early 2010 plate Nissan Micra, which runs on petrol alone. You can work out the miles per gallon or MPG figures by using the calculator in the top right hand corner of the spreadsheet. Whilst real world data is always the gold standard here, if you're not sure on the litres of fuel and miles covered, you can usually find the manufacturer reported MPG via a number of sources, including finding a similar car to yours on Autotrader and looking at the running costs section there. Once this data is entered, you will see that the price per mile and annual costs will self populate. You can see after the Mitsubishi Outlander runs out of battery, it costs us around 20p per mile and the Micra 18p per mile to run. 
But what about if we charge it at our peak price of 29.64p per kilowatt hour? Entering that figure gives us 14p per mile. Still much better than using petrol for both the Mitsubishi and the Micra. Now let's switch things up. What price per unit of electricity would be the equivalent of using petrol? Again, you can see this area of the spreadsheet will automatically generate this for you for up to three cars. So you can see even with the new peak rate on Octopus Go of 38.57p, it'll still be cheaper than running on petrol at its current price. So if you're looking to buy an electric car, the savings that can be made on the running costs by going electric are certainly there to see. You'll obviously need to factor in any other costs associated with your individual position to switch to an electric vehicle. The other important thing to consider here is the CO2 savings per year. You can click on the help button which will redirect you to the website carbonintensity.org.uk which you can then use to get the national figure for the current grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour of electricity used and you can be even more specific by searching for your region in the UK. For the CO2 emissions of your ICE vehicle, you can search the figures again by clicking on the help button which will this time take you to this website where you'll be able to type in your vehicle registration number and obtain the relevant numbers here. For some ridiculous reason, it only gives me what I presume is a combined CO2 emissions value of 44 grams of CO2 per kilometre for our Mitsubishi Outlander PHV which can't represent its emissions when running on petrol, given my Micra apparently is 139 grams of CO2 per kilometre. If you found this video useful and think we've earned it, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel to keep up with new content we'll be uploading. You can also share this video with any groups, friends or family who you think will benefit from it and using the downloadable spreadsheet. So what kind of savings are you getting when comparing your ICE vehicle to going electric? Do let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.